Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor from Johnson County Community College. And this short screencast, we're going to talk about two non-semantic tags, span and div. We already know that the word semantic means it has meaning. And so far, all of the tags that you've used have added meaning, structure, and described the content on your page. Even the A tags in our nav section have been coded semantically as individual list items inside an unordered list. That is a very important goal of today's web page programmers, that they use the correct tag to best describe the content that they're tagging. And that's called semantically coding your HTML using the latest HTML5 tags that are adopted by the current browsers. But sometimes you need to tag something and there's just not a good HTML5 tag to identify what you are attempting to tag. For example, let's say we want to pick out the words inline and non-semantic from inside their H2 elements and style them specifically because they're keywords. How could we tag these two words but yet leave them inside the H2 line? That's where span comes in. Span is a non-semantic tag but it allows you to identify or pick out something in a line. Span, therefore, is an inline tag. If I span these words inline and non-semantic and I save my page and I refresh it, nothing has changed as far as how the content is rendered. Inline is still in its same line, non-semantic is still in its same line. But what span allows you to do is to come over here to your style sheet and style that content that you've now tagged differently than the rest. So let's go for something that's really obvious, such as text color of red. And there I have styled in the same line something different than the rest of the content in that line. We know we're tagging this content for styling purposes. You'll often see a class, if we want more than one thing styled the same way, I'll say a class of red text or an ID if we want to style it uniquely in that open thing span tag. So I'm going to class these both as red text and change my selector to period red text. Now I can use the span tag with a different class or a different ID elsewhere on the web page. These two spans will be styled together because I put them in the same class of red text. Now the div tag is very similar. It is also non-semantic. Div stands for a division. The difference between span and div is that span is used when you want to stay in the same line. All the rest of these tags are block tags or block elements. They create a new block when that tag occurs. They start on a new line. All the heading tags, your list item tags, paragraph tags, and all the wireframe tags that we've learned about are block elements. The content will start on its own line. So div is that way as well. Div is a block element. However, it's not really meaningful. It's not semantic. Div is used to help you make divisions in your web page. For example, here's a very common use of div. Every time we use a div, we typically have an ID attribute because again, we're dividing the web page and we will need to know why are we dividing it? Well, we can put an ID equals something to identify that division. Oftentimes you'll see a div surround all the content of the web page from the opening body tag to the closing body tag. I'm going to close it here. And, and by the way, it's nice to put a comment at the end of a div tag to identify what division you're closing. Closes outer wrapper. That's just a nice little coding touch to make your code more readable. But the reason why you might want to surround the entire content within the body is so that you can style the body and the outer wrapper differently. For example, right now, when you look at your web page, it goes wall to wall. The body of the, the page always goes wall to wall across your browser, no matter how big or small or resized that browser is. What you might want to do is pull your content in off the edges by setting the width of the outer wrapper. That's an ID, so I use pound sign outer wrapper to something less than 100%. I could do something like this with 80%. And by the way, don't forget in your style rules that when you use a number and then a unit of measurement like percentage or M's 
or pixels, there's never a space between the number and the percent sign or any unit of measure. I can set the width of the outer wrapper to be less than 100%. Now when, when I save the style sheet and I look at my web page, it doesn't look any different as I refresh it. But the reason for that is because the content starts on the far left. If I'm only going to use 80% of the viewport, the next thing I want to come in is set a margin on the left and the right hand side. The most common way to do that is to go around your clock clockwise, top, right, bottom, left, top margin of zero, right of automatic, bottom margin of zero, and left of automatic to automatically let the browser or the viewport calculate the amount of margin on the left and the right. If my width is at 80%, that rule is going to put 10% margin on the left and 10% margin on the right, no matter how big or small my web page is. And there we go. As I refreshed it, now I've got 10% margin on the left, 10% margin on the right. Because this is not a very big web page with not much content, it's going to look better at a little bit smaller sizes. But that's how I center content and keep it from going wall to wall as the body does. I wrap it and then set the outer wrapper to something less than 100% and automatically set the left and the right margins. One more thing to show you just to prove that the body goes wall to wall, but the outer wrapper div does not, is sometimes you'll see people come in and style the body. If you want to style the body with a background color, that's quite common, but also sometimes you'll see them style it with a background image. And when you refer to an image in a CSS style rule, it's a little bit different. You use this syntax, URL, left parenthesis, and then in quotation marks, the path to the file. Now my style sheet and my background image are in the same folder, so I can merely put in my name of my file, background.jpg, and save. And let's not forget the closing semicolon on that rule. Save my style sheet, refresh my web page. And now I've got a body background color that goes wall to wall, but I've wrapped my content with this outer wrapper div and set the width at 80% so that it does not touch the edges of the screen. And that just makes the web page slightly more professional and easier to read. I have not intended these screencasts to be an exhaustive look at HTML and CSS, but rather as a supplement to some of the more difficult or tricky things that I've seen students encounter when going through a great HTML and CSS textbook. There's really no substitute for you just getting your hands on the keyboard, making your own mistakes, figuring them out, coding something that's meaningful to you to really learn any language. Thank you.